Hey guys. Just gonna wait for a few people to come in before we start talking. Um, but this video will be shared to um, my timeline in just a second. Um, hi. Wow. You didn't start with that last night. Let's, yeah, let's recap a little bit to what just happened. Um, today, is, today is November the 12th. Um, yesterday was the 11th. Um, there were some threats. Um, people saying that they knew where our house was and they were going to come at 3 in the morning. Um, our animals were still there, um, so we decided to, to kind of hunker down. Uh, I stayed up in the night. Um, and watched, um, and things were pretty quiet for the most part. Today we left, um, well there was a lot of things that happened today. Today God totally protected us, um, and when I say God moves us out of the way, it's not, not a big earth shattering thing, it's kind of just a gentle nudge, and then we miss, we miss a lot. There, there was a, a, a hit on us today, or a hit on her today, um, and we'll explain to you what that looked like. Um, so today we had to drive about an hour to um, take our animals and stuff. We, we spent the day getting the house ready because we're, we're leaving the area. Um, when I say get the house ready, that means that we were getting anything of value out of the house. Um, I was preparing the house like I expected somebody to burn it down or to trash it or to um, whatever. I don't know how far they intend to take this, um, <clears throat> but we needed to get all of the stuff out of our house today that mattered. So we got the important papers, our animals, um, and that kind of stuff. We went to go drop some things off. And then by the time we got home, we were trying to make it back home before dark. Um, our pig is about to be picked up um, and put in a safe place but our pig is still there so we were trying to get home before dark and there was a lot of traffic um, when we got home I wasn't feeling too good and I was gonna go lay down and then I remember that the trash cans needed to go out so I went out um, and then when I was out taking the trash cans I looked in the mailbox and in the mailbox there was a slip of paper um, I think she's got a copy of it on her phone yeah, um, and it's it said, my story. It, it was a very generic thing that UPS or the, the Postal Service will leave you when you have a package. Right off the bat, we knew it's fake. Because you know how you can go to 99 cent store, the Dollar Tree, and just find um, like a post blank checks note. or post-it notes, and it was blank. Uh, right off the bat, it was fake. Uh, it, it had numbers on it. It had my name on it. It said this was the second attempt, and that's a lie. We never got a first attempt, um, so. And for, on, for the record, we barely get packages to our home because we get packages to our PO box, which is not, um, and not local. So. <laughs> so after we got this note, we went uh, and looked back on the camera, um, and thank you to whoever encouraged us to get cameras. I've never got them before because we've never caught anybody like anytime we try to um go after anybody or, or find somebody they magically disappear the camera's broken this that or the other and so uh, i have over the years i've just given up trying um but we went ahead and got the camera and, and i've enjoyed it because we could watch our dogs when i was gone um i can watch the dogs in the yard so you know I, that's mainly what i was using it for uh until today you know, go ahead um we uh, were on the camera, we seen um, a black man with a black hat, what appeared to be a black shirt, a mask on, um, and beige pants. Um, it looks like knee highs from what you guys are seeing on the camera. Um, this man jumped the fence. He, he didn't park in the driveway. He did not park in the driveway or directly in front of our gate. He parked to the point where you could block your car if and only we had a ring, doorbell, 
Yeah, camera. Yeah, he, he strategically parked, and we have a couple of big trees down. We we live on an acre, so the whole front uh, at the at the curb is fenced and gated, and you can't just open the. We keep it chained and locked. Um, he didn't park in the driveway where the gate was. He parked down uh, by the trees uh, in a different location where he could jump the where he jumped the fence. Yeah, he jumped the fence. He walked up. My pig was hiding. My dog was inside, and thank God my dog was inside um, because that's the only way that he didn't. That's the only reason why he didn't come inside. Um, he went to the front door, and then he went to the side of the house. He scoped out the house, and then he left or he jumped over the gate to leave now when we went to speak with our neighbors um we spoke with the neighbor who told us that he was there for 30 minutes it was not a, he was he was in the video it appears that he's carrying a duffel bag a small duffel bag but he wasn't according to my neighbor he was carrying something that looked like a, a huge gun bag um he was in the yard for 30 minutes um he was on the phone with somebody and at this point you know my neighbor's husband asked the same question why didn't you say anything what is going on and she stated i don't know you know um i'm not sure <laughs> we were both just as shocked but she doesn't know she told me he looked like a businessman but i asked her did he have any identifying logos did he have anything identifying on his car and she stated no so my thing is what is a businessman okay the the issue the issue is there is no usps there is no fedex there is no ups that and there is no package that is that important to trespass and jump over someone's fence to come into their yard i called the number that was on the slip and there was no answer i made sure that i left that message for that person letting them know that i know that you're I know that you who you are and there's no reason to try to call back and bullshit me and try to give me some excuse of what package you had because we don't get packages like that for number one for number two there's no package that that's important to step on to, to trespass and jump over onto someone's property if my dog bit them if my pig ate him alive if he got COVID we would have been sued so yeah, he, he this, wasn't there. <laughs> this makes, can you, come on now, okay? This is, I'm happy because we finally got someone on camera. I'm happy because you guys are seeing and you guys are, you, you are able to tell. We got the threat that they were going to send someone to our home and they were going to make it look like someone else did it. This man came in broad daylight. And, okay, so... <laughs> The way this stuff works, it's so enmeshed with normal stuff and evil and gangs and, and killing and that stuff. And then they throw the occultism in there. So when this lady said, and I'm, I'm going to make some connections here. I want you to follow along. When this lady said that she saw a businessman, that's not what we saw on camera. But I don't think they realized we had a camera. It wasn't in the, the normal place where people put their cameras. But... She stood there and watched for 30 minutes, and she had no idea why she did that. And that's a common thing with witchcraft. They, they're able to put spells over people. So she's watching this for 30 minutes, and she describes him as a businessman. So when we end up dead, and they go question the neighbors, there's only one witness, and she's going to say it was a businessman. So that kind of shifts the focus. Now, I want you to think about... Not too long ago, uh, I, I forget, maybe related to the Epstein case. It was related to one of these big cases, but the judge's wife, or, or the judge's family was killed by a delivery person. Okay, and then I want you to think again uh, for George Floyd. What happened to George Floyd? People stood there with their cameras. With their for cameras out. I don't know about you, but I'm not going to stand there and watch something happen. To there's you. witchcraft spells that they kind of put on people to make them be credible witnesses and, and shift the direction of the focus of where they want. Um, these are just things that happen to survivors all over the world. There are millions of survivors all over the United States. And that was States. my point, guys. I want you to understand that I really, I really did not want, I don't want anything. I'm content with what I have. This blew up overnight. When I thank everyone from the bottom of my heart from listening to me because I don't think 
I don't, I've never seen this many people hear me ever. My school people called at one point. Um, my school people called at one point and said, you know, I found your video. It was crazy. I, everybody that has shared the videos, um, especially people who have a huge following um, and just play a big part in, in something that's bigger than them, I thank you. But now that things have gone viral, we're in more danger than we, are, we were. We have been living basically silent but loud. We, I don't go to certain areas, guys. I don't even go through the drive through in some cities, okay? Even if I'm sitting in the back seat. We do those things because we wanted to basically try to live close to something but not have to be worried about everything all the time. Now that these videos are viral, our life is completely is completely in danger and I can't express that enough. I have not had any more phone calls. I have not talked to anybody. We are not in association. We are not partnering. We are not talking to anyone right now. There is no one helping us. No one. Everybody is like, oh my gosh, this story. But you guys, this does not happen like the movies. It's way worse. I need you guys to please understand that this is, this is going to be a hell of a bumpy ride. But it's, it's not even just bumpy. This is about to get psycho because of how viral this is. And I'm happy, but we have no safety. We have nothing but us. And we don't, you know, I'm, well, I'm not expecting anybody to come in to be my savior. I know that there is tons of rescues going on right now, and I don't want to interrupt anybody. But uh, we have somebody that's trying to kill us, and it's not just one person. There's, there's groups of people. Absolute groups of people. Jailbirds. And you know that there are prison jailbirds who live better than everyone else. So with people who are at a top rank all you have to do is make one phone call this is about to get out of control this is not what I expected to happen and honestly I just we I don't I don't know I, I, I see the comments of how do we help I don't know and that's I, the problem that's been the problem we for will try decades. to call the authorities in the morning so you guys can see that we're documenting this and we're going to try to grab some friends to go with us because i don't trust authorities but we're just going to call the authorities so we can document things in the morning things are about to get hella crazy as as wake i it wasn't this big I I have barely had 70 people on my chat. There are 800 people here tonight and I now have 21,000 followers. I have this is this is something I, some people keep texting me and 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 sharing things. This is great and all. And I appreciate every single one of you, but please don't be quiet, please be loud because yes, if everybody was you know, concerned, very concerned about us because at, we didn't post anything after the video. A lot of people started making moves and making, tagging people and just saying, hey, can someone please, you know, try to contact or do whatever. And that is what I appreciate because that's what we're definitely going to need. I don't expect justice for myself. I don't expect anybody to come in and be my savior. I don't expect to go back. I'm, there's nothing that I can do now. We're not going to stop fighting. I made sure I called that person and left him a voicemail and told him I'm not scared of you. The only thing you're doing is annoying me. And no matter what bullshit excuse that they come back with, that they're going to try to play like, oh, we were delivering this or that, there's no excuse and there's no reason because I will press charges on that person for trespassing on my property. If they try to call me back and swear up and down this was a package delivery because no worker should be trespassing. So this is bullshit. The, if it wasn't for my back, there was no professional recording. There no, was no, no automated it service. Was just nothing. No, it, nothing. It, it was it, it was a hit. And I'm I posted you, the phone number. I don't care anymore. I'm out of patience. I'm out of patience and I'm tired. In more ways than you guys could ever explain. 
I could ever explain. I don't know. I don't know. I don't I don't want to ask for anything. I don't know what I need. I don't know what to do. We don't know what to do but just to move to the left and make sure that we just get out of the way. It's great that things are getting shared. But now and God did keep us safe today. God yes. has always kept us safe. There were so many little details about today when we're looking back that if one little thing went wrong, it, that just would have been it. Um, if we normally we leave the dog outside, but today we left the dog inside. If we hadn't left the dog inside, I know that man would have been lying in wait inside our house. Um, if um, um, our grandmother didn't, Grandma Holly didn't go with us today um, down the hill, she would have been home alone. Like there, there were so many details today that I know God kept us safe, and it's been that way for ten years. So we have that. Um, it's just there's no charted course for this. There's no well, we need to do this or that, or we need to go here. We're winging it. Um, we're just winging it. Yeah. So we will look in the comments real quick because I haven't got to talk to some of you amazing people. Um. Thank you so much for praying, everybody. Um, somebody said, I seriously think you need to go through Trump or his family. I wouldn't trust anyone else. I don't trust anybody. I don't trust cops. I don't trust anybody. I don't. I don't know what to do. And then, I, don't know if, I don't know if the president could help me. I don't know. I don't, I don't know. I know he's busy. <laughs> I know that there's rescues going on, and I don't want to interrupt those. I don't know what to do. We don't. We don't know what to do. We just do what we always do. And we handle it. And 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 it's fine with me because you know, if it. It, we're speaking out and it's 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 proof that people are upset because why would you be at my home why would you jump my gate why would you have a backpack with you bigger than you what was in your bag and if it was a package for me and you were at my property you were that close to my front door you walked past you were on an acre of property and it took you a minute to get to my front door why didn't you just drop the bag where it was why did you take it back with you who gets out of a car to hop a fence to carry a backpack to carry it right back again like there there were so many things wrong with this you can't spin it you can't spin it for anything positive other than what it was it was somebody was at the house to hurt her yeah that's what do you think was. it was it was yeah that's all it was somebody wants us to shut up and they'll probably not stop at anything now because of how viral this is they didn't want it to get out this way and it's about to be worse it's just about to get worse um, we don't we don't know what to do um, and, in, and at this point um, uh what to say <clears throat> calling the police and documenting it that, it's nothing that's busy work staying there and expecting just him to come back that's not being smart it's not just going to be one person when they come after us we know that that's how much people are involved there are groups of people involved we're not just talking about a republican we're not just talking about a democrat we're not talking about just elites we're not talking about Gangs, we're just we're, there's so much people that I've spent a lot of time trying to stay away from. I don't know, I don't know what to do. We we're, we stay ready, that's for sure. We stay ready.
we stay ready. So we we were ready. But a fair fight is a fair fight. I won't even like when I physically I won't fight with somebody who's not going to be able to fight me back. And you five, ten people jumping on one to two or three people is not fair either. So that's what I mean. It won't be a fair fight if we stood and fight them. We're not just talking about one person. We're talking about a lot of people. Can you call the military? The military is not all safe either. I don't know who to trust. The problem, and the other problem is... I don't know. If we call someone, if we call the police, if we would have called the police today, they would have come out, listened to our story, looked at our video, maybe made a copy of it, took a copy of the the note, um, given us a police number, and then went on his merry way. That... You know, that's nice if I want to call him back in a week and, and maybe they finally captured somebody, but that's not going to help us tonight. That's not going to help us tomorrow. Mm-hmm. Um, they're not going to be there with us in the middle of the night. You know, that that's just not practical. And, and a lot of people will say that we'll, um, for battered women, we'll get a restraining order. That's a piece of paper. That That's not going to stop somebody from beating the crap out of you. Mm-hmm. Um, if somebody's going to um, commit... Uh, assault and battery on you there they don't care if you have a paper it, you know th- that's busy work and that's lip service like those are just things that we were taught to say to other people but they're not practical and they're not realistic someone said who is after you do you have any idea some yes some no i was trafficked and drugged and at one point blindfolded at some times because you're not allowed to see where you're going or where you are so there are situations where i've met people who know me but i don't know them and these, this, these videos have gotten around all over the place. So I don't exactly know where or who or if we could trust anybody and who knows me and if I know them. Um, there are, like I said, there's a lot of people involved. If To, to give you some perspective, this kid was trafficked since childbirth or since she was a baby. She was um, raised in SRA since she was a baby. She was MK Ultra, and has ties to military MK Ultra. So that's hundreds of thousands of people that have trafficked this kid, that have had hands on this kid, that have. Um, you have no idea how big this is. Some of them she knows. Some of them wear masks when they rape children. Some of them disguise their voices. Uh, there's just a a million things that go on um yeah we will we want we're, we're we would let someone help us but that depends on people are just people and we understand that people can only do as much as they can do and i've been taught that and i've seen that so some people feel like okay i'm gonna share this and i'm gonna do that and i'm gonna help them okay that's awesome but then after the share we're still in danger uh, you know what i mean I want some we if there is someone that can call us right now and say that they can help us somehow some way literally help us as we speak right now get out of this situation I will answer them I will let them help I never turn down help I'm just saying that I would need to talk to this person I would I we don't just go oh yes I believe you're just gonna be my savior just because you said so and in the last 48 hours we did have I see some of you putting some suggestions on here on Facebook of people to call or people that might help and we have been in contact with some of those names and we were promised uh not promised but we were uh, led to believe that there would be um some things happen that it's 48 hours later we've had somebody in our yard and we're still trying to figure shit out on our own basically um for 10 years it's just been her and i um we've had to figure this shit out like there's just no other way to say it. We've had to figure this shit out on our own. Um, and we're so, still so doing that. Yes, but at this point, what do you have to lose? Nothing. Nothing. So if somebody called us right now that was legit and said, I can help you, we can let, yeah, please help us. Help us. I, I that's not, I'm not saying that we're done. We're going to turn down or deny anyone's help. That's, I hope that you understand guys what I'm saying. I'm just saying we can't just easily put our trust into cops or put our trust into um 
high authority or someone with a high following or whatever. I'm not just saying we're going to pour our trust into that person. But no, we need help. I'm telling you right now that we need help or else these vid that I which <laughs> we need help. We need help. I don't know what to do. We don't know what to do. This is about to get really bad and <laughs> we don't know. We don't I don't know. What can we do? What what can we do? I we we've, we've always figured out something to do, but how viral this is it's not the same. I, I wish I could explain that because I know some people are sitting on here like, I don't understand and I know that some don't understand because some never have had this situation. And they they don't know, but I... <laughs> Cops aren't trustworthy. Many are involved in trafficking too. Yes, they are. I was trafficked through a police department. So yes, they are. And again, for, for anybody that's wondering, this is why survivors don't speak. If they live long enough to get to the place where we're at right now, this is the stuff they go through. Um, you know, it's always, well, this can't be happening because nobody's coming forward. Nobody's speaking up. Well, there's a reason for that. It's exhausting. It's really draining. Um, we're not denying the help from the authorities. We will call the authorities. I just, I said that. I will call the authorities in the morning, but there's nothing really that they can do. Just unless gonna, someone we'll is hurt. Tape that, you know, well, I'll, I'll, I'll put it live tomorrow. He's we will call the authorities. He's going to look at the information and he's going to, we've, we've been down this road is what you're, okay, there's so I think many documents. There's so much documentation. There's so They'll much documentation give you a for years. Card I have with it. with your um, case number on it, and then when he's done, he leaves. Then what? Then what? That's what. That's the. They're not going to be able to do anything. They have to see someone hurt. You know how police respond. If you have a missing persons report, they go and say, you know, we can't do anything until. If you know where they are, if their life is in danger, that's when we can do something. But as of right now, we can't do anything. But we thank you guys. It, we, it, it's going to take action. It's going to take people standing up to the this, the reality of this, making noise. You disrupting the demand is the only thing that's going to make this stuff stop. That's it. You have to disrupt the demand. You have to make some noise and you have to kind of disrupt and interrupt the business. When you start messing with somebody's money and when you start messing with somebody's business, they turn into different people. They get upset. We have so many people that have said, hey, you know, you can come here, you can come here, you can come here. And it's and that's amazing, but it's not easy to get there. <laughs> well, you know, that's the, the other problem is, you know, a, a lot of you guys have opened your homes and I appreciate that. And that is like the most amazing thing. But then that puts you guys in danger. Yes. Um, survivors usually have trackers. They have implants. They have a whole host of things. Um, so we always tread carefully where we go and what we do because our presence or her presence um, will put you in danger. Um, and if you're willing to open your home to us, we can't go there knowingly and make and, you a and target. Make you a target. So, so it's it's uh, and people always that's the thing like everybody's like I want to help I want to help I want to help but then you see how serious it gets and then it gets scary for those who are parents or just you know not used to this reality and then they have anxiety and they don't know what to do and they're terrified and and now we have to leave but and they're now full of anxiety and don't know what to do with themselves like it's it's it's, um, it's like a lot but if somebody would call us right now and tell us that they would help us 
I, well, we do it. We well, will. we've had people say that they would help. Yes, um, we did. Actually. Saying that you will help and saying, this is what I can do for you and let's do this right now is a whole other thing. Um, than actually going through with it and showing it. We've had people, I've had some people contact me and said that they would love to help. But then I, I haven't, I don't, there's nothing else. That's it. That's all. That's all I've gotten. I appreciate that for you reaching out to me to say hey a lot of people to say hey like I want to help but now we're in the situation where our lives are completely in danger now and nothing so we'll keep you guys posted I'm going to post the police report in the morning I'll make sure that I'm live you guys will see all of that I will make sure that our phones stay on as much as we can right now. We're in a hotel. We're safe um, for the night. And then we will handle um, police in the morning and then go from there. We have whatever that looks like because we don't know yet. We're just rolling with whatever's happening at this point. And please, if there is somebody that will help us, then we would thank you and be grateful for that we're not turning down help i hope that didn't sound bad we're not turning down help we're just explaining to you guys that we've been through all of this before and we're st we still didn't receive anything yeah don't i don't want it to you guys to think that we're just like trying to make excuses for stuff we've been down these roads before i i have a stack of little police cards with with uh case numbers on them um Guys, and there's files, are. there's files and files. We have documentation of so much. This is not anything new. This is not a new, this is nothing new. It's just amped up way more, way more. So, um, we're going to try to get some sleep. Yeah, it's been a long three days. We have maybe had a few hours of sleep here and there in the last three days. Um. So after we get done tomorrow, hopefully we'll um, be able to, to get a little bit away from here uh, where we're at. Yeah, we're gonna. We've already packed up and we're gonna get out of here. Um, but we just got some things to. We still got some things we gotta do. But my my main thing is as we're walking through this, I want you guys to un know that there are survivors. There's millions of survivors in the United States, like Ali. Um, and they're going through the same thing. They all go through the same thing. They're hopeless. They, there's nobody to help. There's nobody that will help. Uh, the people that do help might help for a short time, and then they get burnt out or they get scared. Um, survivors live a, a tortured life, and I don't just mean trafficking survivors. I mean MK Ultra, um, SRA. Yeah. You know, if we, if I had just, you know, told you what they went through, it, it's hard to fathom and it's hard to believe that people could go through this stuff. And it, it, Can you but, take the trackers out? Trackers are everywhere. Trackers are sometimes in the weirdest places and sometimes um, if you mess with them, you can um, draw more medical attention than needed. So there's, yeah, there's a lot to that. There's also uh, crystal, liquid crystal trackers that you really can't remove there, there's just a lot of there's technology um, that teeth trackers mind. there's um magnetic trackers there's ways that um pimps now um buy their girls or brand their girls with um electronic tattoos or barcodes so that the barcode is specifically under the skin the and the only way that you can see it is through a cell phone so you can scan them and see what their price is that is exactly how some pimps now brand their survivors or brand their victims because um, they don't want to notify like a, a big tattoo or a big brand on them. So there's so many things. Yeah, you're right. Uh, Stacy and Philly, you're right. So um, we're going to go get some sleep and then we'll keep you guys posted in the morning we can't thank you enough for making noise and, and your prayers because your prayers are your prayers kept us safe today yeah um, i can't yeah um so thank you thank you thank you and um if anybody knows anybody that would 
be willing to do anything to help us, please. We're we're open to whatever, but we just we need to see some actions too with it because I mean we could talk to you and that's great and we appreciate talking to you, but we're still here. So thank you guys so much. You guys have a great rest of your night and we'll see you guys soon. Um yeah, I know I've got a lot of messages over here. I know I've got a lot of friend requests. Um just bear with me. It's gonna be another day or so before I can start getting to those. Um, I want to get us away from here first before we can kind of just breathe for a minute. Um, so, yeah, just hang in there with us. All right. Thank you so much. Good night.